The other day I watched the amazing flamenco show of Lourdes Fernandez, who is a dancer coming from Madrid but living in London for so many years. And she's doing shows all around the UK, not just the UK, Europe and the US and all over the world we can say. So it was very passionate and it was very strong, just like flamenco. Flamenco is a dance which is coming from Andalusia, located in the southern part of Spain. So it's a mixture of many cultures, but the roots are coming from the gypsies living in Spain. And it is believed that the Gitanos, the gypsies living in Spain, have moved to that location between the 9th and the 14th century from India. And they have, their culture have been mixed over there with the Jewish and the Muslim culture. So in Flamenco, you can be hearing that kind of stories, the, sto the stories that are belonging to different kind of societies. So who were in Andalusia and who you can still see their reflections in Andalusia. But it was not just a very innocent and pure mixture of cultures because Spain was, uh, they have increased, they had increased their pressure upon the minorities like the gypsies, like the Muslims and uh, Jews over there starting with the 14th century. So the minorities over there in the southern part of Spain, they had to be stick together. They had to be getting married with each other to survive in the country but despite that they have been they had they had been expelled from Spain so Andalusia this culture and these dances and music is telling these stories that's the reason maybe when you listen to a flamenco song you can feel like you have been listening to an old to the centuries old suffering so it is believed the beginning the first part of flamenco was just the music and the songs the dance came later on and while they were doing the music there were sticks and canes that were doing the rhythm and you know the rhythm and the beat in flamenco is different than many other kinds of music <laughs> And also, for example, there are so many people, musicians and directors and um, arts and culture people who have uh, promoted uh, flamenco for so many years. It, one of them was Federico Garcia Lorca, who was a poet, lived in Andalusia, and thanks to him, flamenco had been revived with the beginning of the 20th century. But Federico Garcia Lorca was killed by the Franco soldiers at the beginning of the Civil War. It's a dilemma, it's an irony, but flamenco also was promoted by dictator Franco during uh, his dictatorship, during his rule, because it was, it seemed like a good tourist attraction. But flamenco is more than that. While it was promoted as a tourist attraction, the gypsies were also expelled, they were expelled from Spain and the pressure upon them were getting strong. So there was this irony over there. So. Flamenco has survived, flamenco has resisted to many obstacles during the years. We will be talking about this and more with Lourdes Fernandez. So tell us, comment, what do you feel, what do you think about flamenco and how it affects you. And if you have any other kind of dance stories, you can also share with us anytime you want. <laughs> Thank you.
the flamenco that you saw on Sunday was more traditional one, like the tablao one. So in the traditional flamenco you only find a guitar, singer and dancer, that's it. The lyrics are different, it depends of the style or palo, we call palos, okay? So some of the lyrics maybe speak about the, I don't know, the, about the love or another lyrics about the death or sad things, um, alegrías that was the last choreography that you, you saw, was more happy, you know, because the name, uh, the tra translate, if I translate alegrías, means happiness. So all the lyrics are more happy or about uh, gardens or <laughs> something happy or Cadiz, because came from Cadiz, so. <laughs> There are different rhythms. Dancing in four beats, like tientos, like tangos, like taranto, farruca, that are in four beats. You can find in 12 beats, like bulerías, alegrías, soleá, caña. Okay? Um, you can find in three beats, like uh, fandangos, for example. And you can find in five beats, like Seguirilla or uh, Martinete, for example. What do you think, what do you like about the story and the history of flamenco? Okay, the, for me, the most beautiful thing is the mix about the different cultures. You know, because not only the Castellanos, so Spanish people, that they were living there, I don't know, many years ago, no? But was this mix between the Spanish people that was in Spain plus the, um, the Arabs and the gypsies from the in that came from India. So it's this mix between different cultures and also Judith, Judíos, como se dice? Jews. Jews. So this mix about different cultures is the most beautiful thing because Flamenco grow from there. Is it difficult to be a dancer? Yeah, I think it's very difficult. It's not easy because also you start very, very, when you are very small and you need to be very focused and passionate because you need to learn, you need to learn every day, you need to go in to do exams every year and if you don't pass the exam, they can leave you, you know, like, you need to go. Despite it is very difficult, then there is something that motivates you. So what does dance mean for you? How do you feel while you are dancing? What is the motivation with dance for you? Uh, it's my life. I don't know. When I, I, sometimes I stop in, I say I need to stop for maybe one, two months, three months. And after one month, maybe I, I need to dance again. So it's just, it's just the only thing that I really love in my life. So it's all my life, really. When you dance, you move your body. You, you create endorphins. So, and you feel more happy. This is like this, it's a it's ciencia, no? 
It's not because I know. It's, and then, for example, it, this is for my students that they told me. When they do into flamenco classes, they need to be very, very concentrated. So all the problems, they leave out. Now it is, now you're going to be showing us some basic moves of flamenco. But for a person to perform or to go to a dance class of flamenco, what kind of clothes he or should be having, shoes, or what kind of instruments are there in flamenco dance that they should be considering? Okay, so the most important one is the flamenco shoes because they they have um, needles, okay, on, on the on on the toes and on the heel. So with the needles you can make sounds. So for that reason, you can make sounds very very um, loud, okay. And flamenco shoes need to be like semi-professional shoes. Okay, if you find these ones in internet that are so cheaper, don't buy that because, because are so bad. <laughs> okay, so maybe you need to spend 100 pounds in a flamenco shoes, more or less, or 80 pounds. So, Lourdes, can you show us a little bit the basic moves of flamenco? Okay, so. Basic things are, for example, the position of the body, that you need to be straight with your body, but then a little bit down with the, the legs, okay, like them, okay? And then I'm gonna start with the footworks that are so, the easy ones is just stomp the floor, okay? basic ones and then for example toes and heel if you can see this like this this is the basic ones okay and your legs is from the back okay and then maybe another basic one of footwork will be toes heel another heel A uh, basic, basic one to move the hands that are very, very important. <laughs> so, you need to have the sensation that you take a ball, big ball, okay, and you going in and out with your hands, okay, in and out. This is the movement of the hands, okay, in and out. Then you open your hands and going in and out, in and out with all your fingers, okay? And try to put together these ones, in and out, in and out. And then the arms you can use both arms outside, then both in, okay, then just one out, another one, or in, or in, okay, and you need to coordinate the hands with the arms. So you make a circle with the hands at the same time that you make another circle with the arms. That this is look easy, but it's not really easy. So going in and then going out. Okay? And when you move just one arm, both hands, you need to move mo both hands at the same time. So it's a little bit uh, tricky. <laughs> Okay. Okay. But then the one is so easy to for the people that they didn't know flamenco to to learn the movement of the hands is going out and going in with the arm and the hands 
out and in. Out, like you give something and in. Out and in. And you can do marcajes that are the most easy step of flamenco. Okay, this is a marcaje, for example. That you change your weight a little bit and you're going out and in. Out and in. Out and in. Out. And this one will be on the side. Side. It's exactly the same, but to the side. Okay? And you can move in both arms. Up, E. Up and down. Up and down. Up and down. And it's very important that your head is followed with the with your eyes, the thing that do in your hands. Okay? So if we're doing all the marcajes, so we can do hand from. Another hand from up from and up from down in down in up in up in it's the most basic things so then when you're doing the footwork you use also your your arms so maybe you're gonna start to do this one Write in the comments how do you feel or how do you feel about flamenco and how dance makes you 
live your own dance makes your life different. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>